Hey what's up guys it's Nick2 and today I'll be showing you guys an amazing build that works very well for every gun type that lets you do an insane amount of damage, upwards of 400k damage each shot, and well over 2 million DPS along with having a lot of armor and survivability as well. As you can tell by the gameplay, I'm using a rifle with this build, but like I said, you can use pretty much any gun you want. I think a rifle is overall more versatile though, and is going to be great when playing solo. I mean, as you can see, there's no other gun you can kill enemies this quickly at a range with, but like I said, you can use any other gun. Uh, also, this build is going to be great for the raid, and with the raid, I intend on using a rifle, so that's why I'm using the rifle. But regardless, I think this build is especially strong when playing solo, which is why I made sure to incorporate you know a lot of survivability into the build, as well as having a ton of damage. But it's very easy to swap out a few of those things in favor of more damage, and I'll make sure to mention how to do that within the video. But regardless, this build is still just as strong when playing in a group as well, so I wouldn't worry about that either. If you want to have a build to play with a group, this build is great for that as well. I know that a lot of people think that farming for a build right now is kind of pointless because the patch is going to come out pretty soon and change a lot of things, which is actually why I made sure to make this build with the recent changes in mind so that it's still incredibly strong currently and will be virtually unaffected, if not more powerful, after the patch comes out. Additionally, I don't think the patch is going to come out until at least like two to three weeks from now at minimum, so I still think it's worth farming for and trying the build out yourself, even if you're worried about it potentially being changed. I should mention this build is a little bit complicated and there are like 20 different combinations that you can do to fit your own playstyle and accommodate the gear that you have currently, so my apologies if the video is a little bit too long and I ramble, I'm just trying to be as informative as possible, but nonetheless I highly recommend watching the majority of it so that you know how to make the build as good as humanly possible and what makes everything work. If you'd like to see gameplay of this build, uh, at the end of the video I'll leave some footage of me doing a level 4 control point in only a few minutes, some challenging mission gameplay, and some dark zone gameplay as well, but I'll also be using this build a ton when I stream, so if you want to see the build live, and you maybe want to come chat with me on stream and ask any questions you may have, feel free to check me out at twitch.tv slash nick2, I would really appreciate you guys coming and checking me out. Also, if anybody needs help farming, setting up the perfect build, or anything like that, feel free to email me at nick2biz at gmail.com and I would love to help you out. But anyways, let's get right into the build. Alright, so just like every other build video, gonna briefly touch up on the specialist. I, of course, am going to be running sharpshooter. Mainly with this build, I'm running a rifle, so I mean it's kind of a no-brainer. You get 15% increased rifle damage, but I like to run sharpshooter regardless, pretty much whatever gun I'm using. Unless it's like an SMG specific build or something like that, but usually I always run uh, sharpshooter. Increase headshot damage, increase reload speed, and increase stability and recoil. This is helpful for pretty much any gun and offers you kind of like the highest sustained damage potential out of pretty much any gun type. But if you want to use an AR or an LMG, you can always run survivalist or demolitionist if you just want the flat percent of weapon damage instead. I always just like to go for the headshot damage and reload speed just because I like that style of play, but it's entirely up to you. It's not that big of a deal. All right, so getting into the build itself, like I said, there are a ton of different ways that you can set this up. You can go for more armor, you can go for less armor, you can go for more damage, you can go for different gear sets, you can go for different talents, etc. There's a bunch of different ways to set this up. And again, my version of this is not perfect. I actually could have a lot of upgrades here, and I'll definitely do my best to try to explain to you guys all the different ways to set it up and how to make it perfect, but... But regardless, let's just get right into it. So first off, I think one of the most, most important things with this is the reason that I'm running a rifle with this build is because of the talent and trench. Now you could definitely go for other versions or other weapons, sorry, and try to make different kind of versions of this build. You can go for an AR, you can go for an LMG, and the build is still going to be extremely strong. But since I had a solo build in mind, I really wanted to use the talent and trench, which is going to give me extra armor per, for headshots from cover. Uh, up to 10%. It says 5% right now, and that's because in the current update, it's only giving you 5%, but when the new update comes out, that's actually going to be 10%, which is incredibly strong. This only, of course, though, works with a rifle and a marksman rifle. That's why I'm not using this right now, though, is because I think 5% is a little bit low, so I'm rather just, I'd am rather i rather just run hard-hitting. Um, one thing you could do, though, is you could use Safeguard with this and get a huge extra amount of healing with this. Safeguard, as of right now, is very strong, but when the update comes out, I think Safeguard's going to kind of be nerfed into the ground. So you could run Safeguard with this build if you kind of decide to lose some reds here. And then you could run Entrenched as of right now, and it's very strong. Patience is also pretty decent, but in the new update, Patience is getting nerfed into the ground just like Safeguard. So I wouldn't recommend using it when the new update comes out. But for me right now, I just don't really feel like I need all that extra survivability because what I'm doing isn't really that difficult. So I'm just running hard hitting for extra damage, but the new update comes out, just run entrenched. 
Uh, one thing that people might say is, well, I'm on console, it's hard for me to hit headshots. Even if that is the case, 10% of your armor per headshot, even if you're not hitting a ton of headshots, is still a lot of extra armor, especially in the new update. I keep saying new update all the time, but in the new update, uh, you're going to get a ton of extra armor. Like this armor roll, instead of being 10,000, is going to be about 20,000, meaning that your total armor is going to be way higher than it is right now. And the difference between having like 170k versus like 300k is a huge difference. And of course, since Entrenched is based off of a percentage, it's going to make it even more stronger based on how much armor in total you have. So even if you're hitting one out of five shots as a headshot, getting back that armor is a huge deal, especially when you have such a high armor pool in general. So usually, like I say, with almost every build recently, as I wouldn't worry too much about brand sets, I'd worry more about talent synergy and uh, individual roles. So as you can see, my main goal with this build was to go for a high amount of damage while having a decent amount of armor for overall survivability, which pairs very nicely with the talent on my chest, unstoppable force, extra damage per max armor. This is going to be getting a nerf in the new update. You're getting, uh, it requires for every 25,000 armor. One thing to keep in mind though is that it still, it still requires 7 blue. Um, people think it requires 11. No, that's actually the talent unbreakable. Unstoppable 4 still requires 7 and you're still getting the same damage boost. It's just for every 25,000 armor. This is a pretty significant nerf. But the thing is, you're getting a ton of extra armor. I think this same exact build in the new update would have about 350k armor, maybe 330, around there. So you're still getting a decent amount of damage from this because your armor is going to go higher. And there really isn't anything else worth putting on the chest anyways, so you might as well still run it. But yeah, this is probably the main part with this build, but even without Unstoppable Force, I'm doing well over 300k a headshot without that buff even active, which is still a ton of damage. What I wanted to do with this build initially was actually go for a 577 setup like I had with my other build, but with the gear that I have, it actually ended up being better to go 8 offensive attributes. And you might be wondering, why would I do that? Because you'd probably want to go for Safeguard with this current update. Like I said before though, my main goal with this build was to make it work really well when the update hits. And like I said, when the update hits, safeguard is going to be kind of bad. So I don't really care about going for five or less. And I don't really want it to, I didn't really want to go for on the ropes. Reason being is I couldn't make it work very well with my set of gear. But also, if you do the math with the way that I have it set up with my rifle, at least my individual pieces, I was able to get way more damage out of it not going for on the ropes because instead of getting the utility i was able to go for two piece of raldi here getting extra headshot damage and then since i have three extra reds here that is just going towards overall extra damage i get a little bit of extra headshot damage but i also get some extra weapon damage another thing is that uh, with my ar i like to run optimist which has me stay at five or less but since i'm using a, a rifle i like to go for ranger which gives me extra damage when i'm further away from the target and if i was running on the ropes I wouldn't be able to use Ranger. I think Ranger is going to outperform Optimist on a rifle a lot of the time because you can play at a super long range. And when doing that, you get a ton of extra damage bonus from your gun. So with that being said, I decided to not go for on the ropes, but you could very well swap Ranger for Optimist and then try to go for on the ropes with your gear. Go for 577. Seven. You can definitely do that. Uh, I just decided not to. And then if you did that, you could maybe go for a backpack with Safeguard or something instead of going for on the ropes if you want to go for like 57 whatever. And a good thing about On the Ropes is that you could get a ton of skill power, which is going to give you overall survivability going towards your chem launcher. But with my build, I just don't have it set up like that. Another different version of this build would be going for like three red attributes and then a whole bunch of uh, uh, defensive attributes. And instead of, you know, having precise or devastating here, you could instead decide to go for compensated which is going to give you extra damage for having low crit. With this build, I have 0% crit chance and 0% crit damage because I'm just stacking overall headshot and weapon damage, but I'm still able to do, as you can see, a ridiculous amount of damage without even having crit. One more interesting way that you could decide to set this build up is instead of having an Overlord chest here, you could decide to go for a Fenner's chest so that you have Unstoppable Force and the Talent Hardened so that you're getting extra armor, and then you could get Overlord gloves. Unfortunately, I don't have good Overlord gloves, but you can get Overlord gloves that have rifle damage at a pretty high roll. Health here, which helps go, go towards... Uh, a defensive stat especially if you're trying to do on the ropes or like 577 or something like that getting the defensive stat here helps a lot and then you could go for compensated or, for, or just a passive talent here as well or you could even do that with the current setup and just get a little bit of extra armor out of having overlord if i have two piece overlord right now i get 7.5 percent total armor and that could you know 
boost my armor up a pretty decent amount. If I had more hardened and stuff like that, it would be even better. You could just decide to ditch Unstoppable Force entirely if you wanted to, and just go a ton of red attributes here, and then just get hardened on the chest piece, or go for hard hitting on the chest piece as well. Like I said, there's a ton of combinations, uh, but with my build, I just decided to go for two piece of Raldi for the accuracy and the headshot damage. It's not a ton of extra damage, but overall for me, it ended up being more beneficial than going for extra armor. But if you have the build set up perfectly, you could go, you know, Fenris says here with Hardened, Hardened on here, Overlord Gloves here, Overlord Knee Pads maybe, and then get defensive rolls somewhere else, and then you could have upwards of 300k armor, which would be absolutely insane. My armor rolls are also pretty low on my pieces, but for me, I just went for 8 red, 7 defensive, and it's doing pretty well. Now let's go over individual rolls. I know this is kind of a fuck fest of a video at the moment because it's kind of hard to explain everything and I wanted to get all the different combinations out there but the main goal with the build is to just get as much pure weapon damage and headshot damage as possible while having a pretty decent armor ratio that feeds into unstoppable force. Very similar to the on the ropes build but it works very well in solo play and in group play because I'm doing a ton of damage and I also have a lot of armor to help me tank a lot of stuff. Now for the mask here, I have Wyvern. It doesn't really matter what brand set you go for. You could go for Gila to get the utility if you're trying to go for On the Ropes or something like that. But Wyvern, since I'm not doing that, I just went for Wyvern because it's my highest damage to elites roll here. And then I have health on cool. Would rather have health here or something like that. And then for the talent, just hard hitting for extra damage. For the chest piece, kind of already mentioned this, but you want to get armor. If you're trying to set it up like I have it with a lot of reds here, I just have high headshot high weapon damage this is actually a very good chest piece and then one very important thing here is you want to try to get if you're stacking a lot of reds you want to try to get offensive systems everywhere that you can because that's going to total almost 6.5 percent weapon damage on every single one every place that you can get an offensive system would be on the chest piece you're able to get one on a holster as well but i just decided to not do that you could decide instead of going for a two piece of raldi you could go for a, a rnk holster here and then get an offensive system but then you lose out on the headshot damage from Moraldi, and you lose out on the offensive protocol. But offensive systems are just super strong. And I also went for an offensive system as well as having an offensive attribute. An offensive system on my backpack here as well. It's going to give me a ton of extra damage. But anyway, sticking to individual rolls here for the chest piece. Armor, damage, damage, unstoppable force here. And then I have a defensive system which gives me a little bit of extra armor, which is awesome. You could instead have a rifle damage a generic mod here, which is just free extra damage. And then, of course, a 6.5% weapon damage there for my holster. I have a Raldi holster. You might wonder why I wouldn't just go for crit chance here, because might as well, that is free extra damage. You could definitely do that, but since this build is more solo player oriented, I decided to get a little bit of skill power there so that I could unlock some mods on my chem launcher there. You could also, as well, instead of going for a Raldi, you could go for like DNH, and then since you have a utility system, you could mod it with a high chem launcher skill power, which is going to help you unlock even more mods for your chem launcher, which will make you heal for more. And then for the talent, you can go for precise or devastating. Either or are still very good. Up to you. I just go for precise since I'm hitting a lot of headshots with the rifle. Uh, for the backpack here, there's a ton of different backpacks you can go for. I decided to go for Alps because with Alps you can get double system, which allowed me to use a generic system mod that gives me 5% uh, rifle damage, which is very strong. And then an offensive system as well as having that one. And I really wanted to make sure I got this rifle damage incorporated here, but you couldn't instead of having the generic in there, you could go for a defensive system and get overall armor, or you could just go for utility, get extra skill power. For the talents here, I have uh, Hardened. You can actually get a backpack such as this Wyvern backpack, um, where I have one in here uh, you can get a wyvern backpack that has double passive so you can get hard hitting and hardened for just a ton of extra damage unfortunately the, this one has a utility system so it's not worth for me to go for because i would end up losing the offensive system that i have but you can do that as well if you have the right one you can also go for a 511 backpack but i just went for alps because i'm getting high weapon damage high armor and you could go for on the ropes as well if that's what you're trying to do this talent doesn't really matter though since i'm stacking so much red and i just have hardened Blah blah blah. Safeguard is very well, very good as well as of right now, but in the patch, going to be nerfed. For the gloves, I went for a Raldi. My rifle damage roll could be a little bit higher here; it could be up to like 13%. And then I also have precise. If you're not going for Raldi, you could go for like Alps gloves maybe and get an offensive protocol here, and that could give you an extra, you know, 5% weapon damage in total around there, maybe like 4% actually on average, and that would be pretty good. Maybe you could do Alps gloves with offensive protocol and then R and K holster with offensive system. 
and lose the 10% headshot damage and that could be worth it if you wanted to do that instead. Or you could go for Gila Gloves with like a utility mod slot here to help you reach on the ropes and then having the health as well. For the talent, just main, main thing here is just make sure to get rifle damage here and then make sure to get a good talent uh, either being precise or devastating. And then for the knee pads, I think in almost all cases you want to go for Gila knee pads. Maybe in some situations you could decide to swap it. The thing is though, you get a system mod here, which is great, especially if you have the generic mods with this. This helps you get a pretty decent amount of extra armor as well. And in my protocol mod here, I have extra headshot damage. You could uh, get a defensive protocol mod slot here and go for different stuff. Maybe an offensive protocol if you decide to swap to like overlord knee pads or something like that. There's just so many combinations that you can do with this. Uh, main takeaway is just try to get a lot of weapon damage and try to get a lot of armor and see what you have with your current setup. Try to make sure you're getting hardened and other talents like that. But pay, pay close attention to the mod slots because the mod slots make a big difference. If you don't have the right Araldi gloves, you could easily swap them out or something and then use an Alps thing. And then with Alps, you get a mod slot here, whereas with Araldi, you don't. Same thing when it comes to the backpack, right? You swap out something, you can get an offensive system, which is going to give you more damage than maybe just a brand set would. Stuff like that is really what sets good builds apart from great builds, because going for individual mods here and there can make a huge difference damage-wise. Going over my stats in total, I have uh, 47 crit damage. This doesn't really matter. I could go for a little bit of crit chances to capitalize on this, but I don't really care that much. 150% headshot damage, and then I got... 21% all weapon damage which is very strong, almost 50% rifle damage which is huge, and 80% damage to elites which could be even higher if I decided to go for hardened tier which would be 95%. Oh, I should go over my weapon real quick. Uh, for the, I got ranger, optimize is very good, you could also go for allegro. For the scope here, I have 5% damage to elites. The reason that I'm running a 3.4 times is so that I gain the extra headshot damage from nemesis, but you could decide instead to go for uh, the 8% damage to elites if you want to run a different exotic for some reason. For the muzzle, I have damage to elites. Oh, I have damage to elites as well. You could go for stability or accuracy if you feel like that's a problem. I honestly don't think that it is. For the grip, since I'm not stacking crit or something, you could decide to go for crit chance here instead of accuracy if you want. I'm not running compensated, so it might be worth it to do that. I just have accuracy is what it is. And then for the mag here, I have headshot damage, but you could go for extra rounds or reload speed. Not a huge difference there, but yeah, that's pretty much it for the build. I hope you guys did enjoy. Sorry that this is a little bit longer. I just wanted to make sure to get all of the information out there. The build is kind of compl complicated. I would kind of just try to set it up in any way that you can with your current gear. Maybe go for on the ropes, maybe go for hardened tier, maybe go for Fenris chest for the double talent. You know, just try to focus on individual roles and the system mod slots, stuff like that. You might have to watch a video a few times to know all of the possible combinations. Uh, sorry that it was kind of difficult to explain all of that. I just wanted to, like I said, get all the information out there so you guys know how to make a build. Main thing here is that the build will work in the new update, and that was the most important thing for me. But yeah, hopefully you guys did enjoy. If you did, please be sure to drop a like, subscribe for videos similar to this one. Comment below if you have any ideas for future videos that you would like to see or anything like that. And uh, follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash nick2. Alright, I'll see you guys later. Peace.
generating additional hostile contacts. Yes. Yeah. 